Hey guys, it's Horse2 Tony here. Today's video, we're going to be doing another tip video. This is going to be 10 tips on ARB. This is going to be a continuation of my last video, the five tips of ARB, but those tips were kind of the less common things people don't ever really talk about, like energy state or weapon convergence, uh, vertical targeting. Today is going to be a little bit simpler stuff, kind of the basics, like everything most people should know. So we're going to start off with tip number one. So guys, tip number one is going to be when to engage and then disengage from a fight. Remember, this is ARB. You get one life, one res no respawns. The only way you can come back from the dead is if someone messes up your plane and you're stable to fly it back to your airfield, land, and repair. Other than that, when you're dead, you're dead. Go back to lobby. That's it. So guys, know when to disengage and engage from a fight. If you've been paying attention to what I've been playing in the back as I talk, I've been shooting at this P-51D. I decide, he goes down, I decide to try to boom away. I see he's turning on me, so I try to make sure he's going to miss his shots. And eventually, I just zoom climb away. I, I know I'm faster than him in this time. He's in a turn, he's losing too much speed, so I'm going to pitch up and climb away. I chose to disengage. Because I knew if I would have taken that fight and kept turning with him, he was probably going to get a good angle on me and take me out before I could get one on him. So I skipped a little bit farther into the clip. I keep climbing on the man. He can't keep up with me just because when he originally descended to try to get the shot on me and I zoom climbed away, he couldn't keep up. This is when I chose to re-engage this target and I chose to stall out and come back down on top of him. A, because I knew the clouds after he flew in and we, I went straight for the clouds because I knew that would make it hard for him to tell what I'm doing up here and it would also make it hard for me but luckily I ended up getting the right angle and I come down and get on top of him and land my shots now the reason why I re-engaged him at that moment is because A I knew I was going faster than him and I was higher in altitude than him his plane may perform better at higher altitude than me but I knew with how much of an energy advantage I had on him from him coming below and trying to climb to me that I was in a good position to stall out, flip around, and come down on top of him. Now this is going to be different for everybody's scenario, when to engage, when to disengage. Just know, engage when the fight is on your terms and the cards are stacked in your favor and disengage when they're not. Simplest way. And how to figure that out is basically playing experience and also on my last video one of the tips was to learn planes and what they're good at and what they're not good at so once you start realizing what a bf 109 can do compared to a p51 then you can know what to, when to engage and when to disengage that target it worked out for me when i chose to engage and disengage i ended up getting the kill i ended up chasing his other buddy down that tried to I tried to join the fight with us. I ended up murdering him too. It was a good fight. Now, this part back here, I messed up. So guys, right here is where I messed up. It's real quick, real simple, easy to miss. I missed it. I seen him, but it, it didn't register. I wore Thunder chatted my way through the fight, and I wanted to finish off the first SO800. What I should have done is when I saw that other SO800 high altitude... I shouldn't have followed the first SO8000, 8, I said 800, damn. I shouldn't have followed him low. He was already out of the fight. He wasn't going to try to climb up and fight me. His thing was to dive away, which you guys saw he did. I got good hits on him, I got some critical, and he didn't want to fight me anymore. But I kept pushing it, even though I caught that quick glimpse of that other SO8000 off in the distance my brain registered he's far away i can get this kill and get out took me too long to get that kill i follow him too low and i end up eating it later stopping me from an ace because i didn't know when to disengage the smart play would have been to disengage right there when i saw him tried to climb higher than the other so8000 and had my energy state higher than him but no i chose to be greedy and push the kill i knew i could get that put me in a terrible position later on that is why you need to learn when to engage and disengage like I said if I would have disengaged and climbed I would have had the perfect opportunity to take out the second SO8000 been higher than the original one after he repaired to come back and finish him off or I could have went and landed and still out climbed him and won that game for my team 
So tip number two is going to be understanding your ammo's velocity. So each round in the game has a different velocity from the next. So American guns are going to have a different velocity from a German gun and vice versa. And with Britain, Japan, Italy, Sweden, they're all going to have a different velocity they fly. Now the different calibers will have different velocity too. So a German, a German 7.62 762 by 92 machine gun has a muzzle velocity of 905 meters a second but the first 20 millimeter Germany gets the 20 millimeter MGFF has a muzzle velocity of 585 meters a second and the MG 151 has 700 to 785 meters a second this is I'm getting this off a chart I'll put it in the description if you guys want to check it out it I don't know how 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 new the chart is or how up to date but it's something to kind of go off because then you can tell that each gun has a different velocity so if you're ever behind a target and you, you can see rounds are hitting but you're just getting hits and it's not doing a lot of damage and you're firing cannons also there's a good chance that because your different muzzle velocities of your rounds of your guns are making it so your smaller calibers are hitting but your bigger caliber is missing it's falling short of your target this is something that I didn't understand for a while. I was just like, I, I see Tracer's hitting. Why why he no blow up? But it ended up, it was major with Germany. I know it's a lot with Germany because they have a lot of 7.92 seven, seven, <coughs> and 20mm uh, setups for a lot of the game. Until you get to the 13mm uh, machine guns with the 20mm cannons and 30mm cannons. But I noticed it a lot that I was getting hits with my smaller rounds, but my big rounds weren't hitting. So learn your muzzle velocities. You don't have to learn them exact, but just understand for the most part that the bigger round is going to fly slower than your smaller round. So you got to kind of compensate for that. A yin and yang. And once you understand that, and then you know, all right, I want to hit this guy with my 20 millimeter, pull a little bit further ahead of him lower up whatever you need to do to hit than you would with a smaller caliber gun to make your rounds hit all right guys so the next tip is going to be the use of flaps flaps will help you so much when fighting people there are three different flaps you can use in the game there are rays which just keeps your flaps parallel with your wing yeah parallel i think it's the right word fuck it that's what we're going with it's going to keep your flaps inside your wing kind of level with them and then there's going to be combat flaps, which lower them a little bit to give you more surface area, which also gives you more drag, but also helps your wings to grip the air and turn tighter. And then there's takeoff flaps, which I know a lot of Spitfires only have takeoff flaps, but you can also use those to turn tighter. Now, you will you may not have it bound in-game. I don't know what it is for console, but for me on PC, it's F. I use my flaps if I need just that little bit extra turn to get on the inside angle of someone or maybe to dodge them. Be careful with your uses of flaps because if you go too fast you're going to end up ripping your flaps and then you're just going to hurt your plane overall. Or you're going to pop your flaps and try to do some maneuvers and it's going to make you slow down way faster than if you didn't pop your flaps which might leave you as a sitting duck there. So it's kind of situational when to use your flaps. Is it a good idea to use it now? Will it make me go too slow? Or will it be beneficial to use them? And you're gonna be able to get that extra little turn to be able to either A, dodge your shots, B, land, land your hits on target. Combat flaps, or takeoff flaps, raise flaps, are very, very important because part of your plane, they're there, use them. The other guy you're probably fighting and you're wondering why he's out turning your Spitfire in a 109 right now is probably because he's abusing his flaps. Also, pro tip with your flaps, if you are flying too fast for your flaps to come out, as long as you're not like going 400 miles per hour, you're probably like maybe 25, 50 miles per hour past your rip speed for your flaps, you can spam the button and get an extra boost of flaps like the turn benefits from your flaps without ripping them it has to be really fast it's just like a out and out and out and and it will give you the benefits of your flap for that split of a second they start to lower and then go back up 
but it won't have them out long enough to a they are fl they'll rip and they're also not they're not down far enough for the air to really grip and pull so you can use that to abuse your flaps to be able to get that extra little turn it's something I kind of stopped doing just because I started playing more more fast paced trying to stay really fast and kill people before they can see me or even get the chance to fight me but if one need be just remember you can spam the hell out of your flat button and abuse it and use them without them ripping as long as you're not going like 100 200 miles past what your rip speed is for your flaps all right guys so then tip number four is going to be remapping your different guns to different keys buttons whatever you're playing on pc playstation xbox switch i don't know if this game's on switch which would be pretty dope and i would play this at work if it was but to do so you simply go to your options or controls and you're going to go down down to weaponry you want to how i have it set up is my small caliber guns are my left button my large caliber guns are my right button now what this does is help you conserve ammo and my last tip the different muzzle velocities it will help you what it did for me was when i knew that both my rounds weren't going to hit you can switch to what you're firing and when i first started trying to figure out how to get both my rounds to land or hit the target was i would fire one at a time at a target i go lower caliber bigger caliber and i did that for a while until i kind of figured out what I needed to do to get my rounds to hit, how much more lead I needed to make sure my 20 millimeters were gonna hit. And overall, it helps you save ammo because not every target, like a zero, you need to hit it with a 20 millimeter. You can hit those things with your smaller calibers and they'll burn up and die. Or maybe you don't have a lot of ammo in your 20 millimeter and you need to save it for later on in the fight because you know there's gonna be something bigger to take out and you know you can take them out with just your machine guns that is what that will help with and that's something I think you should do because a it's gonna help you save on ammo because like I said when you don't need to use your 20 millimeters you don't want to just hit one button and it fires every round or you could do a peppering of an enemy at a distance you fire your low or your higher velocity guns which in this case with this BF 109 G6 it's gonna be those 13 millimeter uh, machine guns and then when you get closer you add in the 20 millimeter machine guns just because you know there's a greater chance of them hitting so guys remap your buttons figure out what works for you that's what works for me is my left my left button shoots my smaller caliber and my right button shoots my big caliber and then if you want to go even further secondary guns which are going to be gun pods stuff like that I have that actually set to spacebar just because I don't know I'm weird I'd rather hit extra buttons and save ammo than hit less buttons and waste more ammo tip number five guys is gonna be always look around you when you're flying never not look around you want to know where enemies are at all times if you ever watch any of my gameplays or anything I'm constantly scanning around me even if I'm engaging someone at that time I'm following behind them unless I'm about to take shots I'm always looking above and back above and back or left right I want to know if anyone's coming for me just because a lot of times enemies will seem will bait you they'll look like they're easy to kill which they would be but little do you know you have someone else coming from space down on you so guys this is a short tip look around use your free look any chance you get when you're climbing you always want to have awareness over the battlefield where people are where they're going how high they are if they're going how fast they are where your teammates are as you might be able to set up some juicy juicy bait look around guys always look around it will save your life more times than not unless maybe you're in a head on you're about to fight and you just look the other way real quick that's the only time it's probably gonna get you killed or you're looking around you're not paying attention flying for a low altitude and you're gonna smack a tree only times I can see it killing you it is a lifesaver to always look around Tip number six is going to be always climb from the start of the match. Altitude decides dogfights. It decides basically the whole match because when you're the plane that's higher, you get to choose when you fight. Every card in the deck is stacked in your favor when you are at a higher altitude. It doesn't matter if you're, well, unless you're doing ground strike, climb. 
any fighter climb side climb if you're American or a low low climbing plane or a slow climbing plane you always wanna climb this should probably be tip number one but I don't know I guess I'm saving the best for one of the last but climbing will save your life it'll give you the upper hand when you're going to engage somebody remember guys climb there's too many matches where I go in and let's say I'm playing American props 3 3.0 4.0 <sighs> P51s P47s F4Us will fly into the fucking fight at like a medium altitude and just think it they're going to be good no those planes need to side climb get higher than the enemy use their high altitude performance to get the advantage of enemies if you're not climbing you're not winning and if you're not winning you're probably not having a good time in war thunder tip number eight is gonna be eight seven i don't know you're about to see it on the screen is gonna be throttle control learn how to control your throttle to give you the best results when fighting now this can go many different ways as in control your throttle so you're more maneuverable because every plane has a certain speed that it maneuvers the best uh another way you can use it is uh most time when I do my throttle control, it's when I'm coming in for a boom and zoom and I'm way too high and I know I'm going to hit my rip speed or I'm going to I'm gonna get some major compression and I'm not going to be able to turn and get on target. I drop my throttle to zero and I start doing a pin roll. A pin, pinpoint roll? I think that's what it's called. It'll pop up on the screen right now. But that's what I use to slow down and keep it drop my throttle down you don't always need to be 100% throttle the whole time even though in a lot of my gameplays you'll see me I abuse wet my planes in wet 90% of the time but when need to be I drop my throttle another good time to keep your throttle low is when you're doing a rolling scissors or you're dog fighting with someone and you're trying to force an overshoot because usually if you're in a rolling scissors or any type of scissors the plane that is either a more maneuverable or slower is going to be the plane that comes out on top so if you're in a less maneuverable plane and there's a faster plane or a more maneuverable plane but the more maneuverable plane is going faster and you cut your throttle and you're going way slower than him there's a good chance he's going to overshoot and you're going to get a second to land a shot on him so practice your throttle control it doesn't need to be all the time but I see too many people, they go fucking skyrocketing, or they go from the sky and they just rocket towards the ground, and either A, they rip, or B, they pull up too late, and the compression is too real on their elevators, and they can't pull out of the turn, and they smack the ground. I'm not going to lie, I do it sometimes. Uh, if, if you ever see me in the match and I just smack the ground, I was going too fast and forgot when to pull up. Remember guys, throttle control saves lives. Uh, my motto is fly fast, don't crash, and eat ass. So if you're not managing your throttle, you're you're probably not going to be flying fast because you're not at web. Uh, if you're not managing it, you're going to crash because you're going to go too fast and smack something. And I mean, who don't like to eat a booty every once in a while? Alright guys, so the 8th tip to this video is going to be learning ammo types. No, you can just go into the modifications and look at every ammo you can get for each plane. That's what, that's, I can't say that. Oh, well, it did help me, but that's one of the most important things you can do. I personally use the air target belts with the BF-109 series, the FWs. Those are the best air belts because they have a high explosive incendiary and an incendiary tracer shell and armor piercing incendiary shell. Incendiary and high explosive is what you need for ha uh, is what you need for air battles because the high explosive blows off wings, tails, rudders, everything. It just blows the plane apart. The incendiary is there to light fires. Now different eras of planes have different amount or different belts. So an early war American fifty cal won't have the same belts as a late war fifty cal. So you gotta take that in consideration when you're swapping BRs with your planes. But past that, guys, just use high explosive and incendiary belts, and it'll pretty much get you through every dogfight you ever get into, as long as you land your shots. And as you can tell, my son is making a guest appearance in this video. 
Tip number nine is going to be always look for baits and set up baits for your teammates. This is kind of a tricky one because setting up baits usually works better if you're playing with people you know or that's kind of it or you realize someone's behind you and you have another teammate coming in to swoop them up. You might want to set that enemy up with a good bait which usually just means pitching up hopefully ho uh, hopefully the enemy will follow you into the vertical slow down with you and then your enemy your teammates easy oh god english guys i did so good this whole video and then it's just at the end your teammate is gonna have an easier time picking them off now it's a double-edged sword because you can set yourself up for easily being killed your teammate can whiff his shots there's a whole bunch of things going down but remember it's a team game you want to try to work with your teammates to get the dub you want that victory and that means putting yourself in a shitty situation to hopefully get the guy off you because 90 percent of the time when i'm baiting i i know i'm dead anyways i'm not going to be able to get the guy off so i do my last ditch effort which is to pitch up when i see a teammate behind him and hoping the teammate will land his shots and the enemy plane follows me and slows down too so guys look for baits you can look for enemy baits by if they look like an easy target real quick do a scan around make sure there's no one coming in to help him because if he's doing stuff like i said like pitching up slowing down or doing a bunch of stupid turns where you're like why is this guy doing this he's probably baiting you the tenth and final tip for this video this long video this is my longest video i've ever made and i'm gonna guess like 98 percent of you aren't gonna make it this far into it no, i'm gonna say 99 percent isn't gonna make it this far if you did make it this far leave me a comment i'm actually i'd be very surprised if you make it into a 20 minute video i made but the final tip is angle of attack angle of attack what do i mean by it exactly exactly as it sounds the angle you're taking to hit your enemy is not something i can really explain too well just because i don't know i'm not that good at explaining things but a good two rules you should always take for your angle of attack rule number one the most important is what is your possibility of actually hitting that enemy with that angle you're taking are you taking too sharp of an angle where you're just gonna get like a split second to fire and hit if if you're just gonna get like maybe one short burst off it's probably not a good angle of attack B with that angle of attack you're taking and if they don't die or you miss your shots are they going to be able to readily attack you again? Are they going to be able to flip around and reverse it? Like Missy Elliott. Are they going to be able to do that to you? Flip it and reverse it on you? Who knows? I can't really say too much about this, but just look at another video, someone that can explain it better. But angle of attack is important. You don't want to overshoot. You don't want to leave yourself in a position where they can easily retaliate against you kind of mess around with it this goes with experience for angle of attack like with jets i'm learning angle of attack with jets because it's a totally different ball game and i don't play jets much and i'm trying to figure out what angles do i got to come in at at an enemy to be able to land my shot especially with the migs and their big cannons i i don't understand it it, it just it's beyond my reasoning and grasp of knowledge and war thunder but guys that's the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope some of these tips help you guys like i said if you made it this far in the video let me know down in the comments if you made it this far and if you did don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you already haven't done any of those help your boy tony out we're at 171 subscribers of this recording and we're constantly growing which is a great thing for me and people showing me love telling me that I deserve more subs and views than I got is a real big motivator to make these videos for you guys. But with that all that out of the way oh, with, blah, 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 with all that out of the way guys, I appreciate each one of you that watch it and I'll catch you on the next one.